service. Let's go around. If you feel uh, like you'd like to fellowship, you're more than welcome to do so. You're, we're not forcing you to, but if that's something you'd like to do, you're, you, you sure can do that. Page 358, all right? Tell someone you love them this morning. favorite songs here at this church I know my name is there thank God we know we don't have to hope we don't have to uh, think but we can know that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life you know it this morning you sing it to the Lord and be happy as you sing it
don't sit. Listen. Whatever's happening outside the church right now, you can't do anything about. Whatever family problems you have, whatever physical problems you have, whatever marital problems you have, whatever financial problems you have, all of those problems will still be there when you leave. But I can tell you this, if you'll trust in the one that can take care of them, you'll feel better about them. And today, if you know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you ought to be shouting this morning. Because see, God has prepared a place for you. He's given you a hope and a promise that when your last breath is taken, you know where you're going. Do you know where you're going when you leave this life? I know, I know. So with that being said, can we sing that last verse? And then when you get to the chorus, put the songbook down and just raise your hands to God and just worship as you sing to him. I believe that God would just look over the balconies of heaven and smile on the Centerburg Free Will Baptist Church this morning because we know that we know that we know that our name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> Kayla, come here. You are in trouble. No, it is not. I know it's very hot because I'm mad at you. Listen, I love Christmas more than anybody. I don't think that that's true. You're I do. But can, listen, can we just be thankful <laughs> for what we have? Until we get to Christmas, but we can the first snow, she breaks out the Christmas dress. I am a week late. Typically, it comes out November 1st. So I am a week late Kayla. in a dollar store. I'm just being honest. You all, is it appropriate? Yes. I win. I officially resign as your pastor. <laughs> no two-week notice or nothing. I'm done. No. I'm... What would really be bad is if I come in here wearing a dress, <laughs> Christmas dress. No. All right, let's get serious. Let's get into the service this morning. We've got some special singers for you this morning. They just said they couldn't sing. <laughs> who is it, Butch? Won't you stand up? Tell me who it is. What feller? George Strait. Come on up. I knew exactly who he was talking about. He, was, he wasn't hiding. I already asked him to come and sing. And it's not George Strait, it's Terry Lester. But his wife says he sounds like George Strait. In the shower, he does. <laughs> Make Terry Lester welcome this morning. May God bless you this morning. My wife says snowmen are winter. They're not Christmas. So they're allowed any time. Well, my house 
house is not a mansion I don't drive no fancy car In this world I may never Travel very far but Through all these trials And troubles that we see Just an old time Christian Is what I want to be don't look at me with pity or think I'm doing bad for this life that I'm now living the best I ever had God's plan of salvation may be hard for some to see but no time Christian is what I want to be now I'm proud to be a Christian, I'm proud to wear his name, Jesus Christ is my savior, of him I'm not ashamed, on a hill called Galgotha they nailed him to a tree, it was there that my savior was not ashamed of me. Now I'm an heir to the Father, I'm a joint heir to the Son. There's a crown of life now waiting, which we have overcome. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for the time you set me free. And an old time Christian is what I want to be. Now I'm proud to be a Christian, I'm proud to wear his name, Jesus Christ is my savior, of him I'm not ashamed, on a hill called Galgotha they nailed him to a tree, it was there that my savior was not ashamed of me. On a hill called Galgotha, they nailed him to a tree. It was there that my Savior was not ashamed of me. Maybe I'll try one more. Someday when my last line is written, someday when I've drawn my last breath, when my last words on earth have been spoken, and my lips are sealed in death, don't look on my co-forming pity. Don't think of me as one dead. It'll just be the house I once lived in. My spirit by then will have fled. I'll have finished my time here allotted, but I won't be in darkness alone. I will have heard from heaven the summons to come on home. And when my body is in the grave, don't think that I'll be there. I won't be dead but living in the place Jesus went to prepare. And after all is said and done, Know that my last earnest prayer is that my loved ones be ready someday to meet me there. Amen. Thank you, Brother Terry. Appreciate you. Amen. Thank the Lord. Brother Randy, you have a song? Come on up, brother. Someone have a testimony while Brother Randy's coming this morning. God sure is good to us. I'm telling you, we thank God for all of you. 
be much in prayer for Brother Randy. If you have a testimony, go ahead and stand and honor the Lord this morning. Anyone at all? Praise God for salvation. Amen. I thank Him. Sometimes I wasn't going to sing. Sometimes we get uh, feeling sorry for ourselves. Everybody else. We need to honor the Lord, regardless of what we face. So pray for us. There are things I can't believe. There are things I won't receive. There's no proof. There's so things I cannot understand. Things I cannot comprehend. This. One thing I know, I know he opened up blinded eyes one day. I know his precious blood washed all my sins away. I know his peace, sweet peace, filled my troubled soul. Yes, this one thing I know. That are written in his words, and all of them are so. It may quickly be discerned, there's much I have to learn. This one thing I know I know he opened up my blinded eyes one day. I know his precious blood washed all my sins away. this one thing I know is this one thing I know come on up sister Evelyn you have a song you'd like to sing you said anybody while she's coming have a testimony for the Lord Stand up and honor the Lord this morning. Bless your heart. Amen. 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 Somebody else. Sister Evelyn's coming this morning. Have a testimony for the Lord. I'm thankful that God, uh, as Sister Billy said, you know, we all, for us to think that we sit in a, in a place of righteousness and we sit on this separated throne somewhere apart from all the sinners, let me tell you something, you're in the midst of all of them. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none, you said, some people say, well, I'm a good person. Well, let me tell you something, friend, get off your high horse, get off your pedestal. Get off your throne of righteousness because the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. Now, we may consider good to the things of this world, but in the eyes of God, even as a believer, as a saved Christian, the Bible says that God looks down upon us and all he sees is filthy rags. But I'm thankful if he's able to save us, he's able to keep us. Amen. Amen. Sister Evelyn, come and you sing for us today. She asked me if I knew this song and I don't think I know it. But I may know it once she starts singing it. And Sam doesn't know it. So I'm hoping you guys will know it. I heard this on the radio this morning, and it gave me inspiration to sing it. When we see Christ. Anybody know it? Hold up your hand. When we see Christ. Oh, my gosh. I've been singing this for years. I didn't realize I was ancient. <laughs> When we see Christ, and uh, I'm going to have to sing by myself, not unless you can pick it up on the piano. He's pretty good. That's what I figure. If I start it, he'll finish it. Mm -hmm. All times a day seems long, 
our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light. We're tossed and driven on, no human help in sight. But there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problem. Just go to him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trial will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven, a harp, a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished. We'll lay our burden down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small. When we see Christ, one glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I used to sing soprano, but I don't have that voice anymore, so I had to learn it another way. Amen. Thank you, sister. You sound better without the piano anyways. Amen. Everybody else? Go ahead, sister.
sera. Mm. Right. That's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Mm. I'll try. How's that? Mom asked me to sing, and I didn't know if I could. So since you asked, not because I, I'm just digging myself a hole. I didn't think I could, but listen, if God wants me to sing, I'll sing. Um, junior church, you're dismissed. Everybody else turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. No, if I can sing or not. Uh, of course, with my voice the way it is, but we'll do our best. You be much in prayer for us. Pray that uh, I'll get through this. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbye. There be spoken. Just a few more days, a few more days to labor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 13, as they continue to pray, 
we thank God for getting us through that song and I didn't think I could and uh, I guess it's uh, when our faith is weak that's what we're going to preach on today is faith and it's amazing uh, what God can do with faith you know Jesus said if you had the faith as the size as a grain of mustard seed that's just a little bit like a tip of a pencil he said you could move mountains let me ask you something how many of you today have a mountain in your way that you need moved I'll tell you what our country's got a mountain in its way and I believe that we can move it if we'll pray if you're there this morning stand with us chapter 13 the book of 1st Corinthians as I said earlier junior church is dismissed I'm not sure how many's back there I'll do my best to get through this message. This is a beginning of a series of messages that God has put on our hearts. And I'd like to give you the title uh, this morning. And I've never done this before, but I want to give you my points before I ever preach it. Today's message, this series of messages, we are in the month of November. Thanksgiving's coming up. And, you know, Thanksgiving is really not the actual day, but what we should be thankful for has really been on my heart this month. Every scripture that I have sent out this month in November has been about thanks, thanksgiving, and things like that toward the Lord and, and what's happening in our lives. But the title of today's message is this, Things to be Thankful for. Things to be Thankful for. And over the next couple, two or three weeks, I'm going to be preaching a series of messages on this very verse, this chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, on things we need to be thankful for. Let me say this. This is what we need to be thankful for. Faith. Faith. It's biblical. We need to be thank thankful for our faith, our hope, and love. Those three things right there. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We honor you. We exalt you, Lord. And we know that you're in the midst of everything that's happening this morning. God, I thank you this morning for getting us through that song. Lord, when we think we couldn't, Lord, we know that faith took over. And God, you delivered once again. And Lord, I know there's several here today that's going through struggles, trials, tribulations in life. God, and they don't see an end to it. But God, today by faith, I pray and declare that today they will see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. God, you teach us in your word, it is darkest right before dawn. You say that weeping may endure for a night, but it is joy that comes in the morning. And God, I pray today, Lord, that you would restore the joy. And Lord, we all get to that place in life where we just have no joy. But God, let us be reminded of what you said in your word where David got to that point and he simply asked the question, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God, help us today. Let us learn something of your word. And God, will give you praise. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. you may be seated and read with us. Verse 11, Paul writing to the church of Corinth says this. Of course, the first few verses, first nine verses in chapter 13, Paul is really teaching and preaching on a specific subject, and it is charity or love. But he gets to verse number 11, and I want you to notice what Paul is saying to the church. Now, some of us need to take heed to this. He says this, when I was a child... He said, I spake as a child. He said, I understood as a child. He said, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also I am known. Here's my text verse. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These, look at the next word, three. But the greatest of these is charity. I have one point today, but I have seven <laughs> subpoints. Today I'm going to preach on the importance of faith. I want to preach today on why we should be thankful for our faith. 
I want you to understand something that we always should be thankful for, first of all, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love. But I believe as a believer in Christ that we should be thankful that, first of all, that we have faith, that we have hope, but we also have love. And we understand that love or charity is beyond greater than any of these things. But before you can have love, you must first have faith and hope. Now, I want you to understand these traits, faith, hope, and love, these are traits that God has instilled into the believer. In other words, if you're a born-again believer, he has implanted them inside of you. When I got saved, I didn't have much faith, I didn't have much hope, and I surely didn't have the love that I should have for others. But once I come to know Christ, I realized that I had faith, I then had hope, and I started loving people that I never thought I could ever love. You see, those are the traits that God puts inside of the believer. And today we should be thankful for those three traits. I want you to notice in verse 13, he starts out, or he says this, he says, and now abideth. I think before we go any further, we must understand what the word abide means. It means to dwell. It means to dwell inside of us, the believer, the Christian, the church. What abides in us should be faith, hope, and love. We sing that song, He Abides. I am rejoicing night and day. Right? I'm rejoicing night and day. Because I walk the narrow way. For the Comforter abides in me. He abides. He abides. My Savior, He abides in me. And if he dwells or if he abides, then he has put something inside of me that I must share with everybody else. Thank God this morning that the king, the creator of all things, abides into and inside of the believer. Three, the word or the number three is a significant number in the Bible. It along with the number seven means perfection. Or completion. Now, let me just go ahead and tell you today that these messages that I'm going to preach probably won't be the running the aisles, shouting hallelujah, snot slobbering, spitting, and all that stuff. But it will be great lessons for us to take notes with and notes of. Because I'm going to give you a lot of scripture that I need you to pay pay attention to. The number three is mentioned in the authorized King James Version of the Bible 485 times. And of those 485 times, it is only mentioned twice in the Old Testament. Now, the word faith or the word, uh, 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 the number three, though it's mentioned this many times, I want to give you some things that's affiliated in the Bible with the number three. And first of all, I would neglect or I would be shame on me for not mentioning, first of all, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that these three, the Trinity of God, are one. They're also, along with God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we must realize that God himself is omniscient. He is not only omniscient, but he is also omnipotent. Not only is he omnipotent, but he is omnipresent. What does that mean, Pastor? It simply means this, that God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful, and God is everywhere. Nobody, nothing, this side of heaven is like the God of heaven. Amen? Time is measured in the Word of God by past, present, and future. Three. There are three angels mentioned in the Word of God. First of all, we Realize and hear of the angel Michael, the second one, Gabriel, and then the one no one likes to talk about is Lucifer. The three angels, that's the only angels in the Word of God that has ever been mentioned by name. If you'll go back when God destroyed the earth the first time with the flood, there was a man by the name of Noah. Noah had three sons. Their names was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Moses was hidden from, his, uh, from the peers for three months. 
Three men, if you remember, when Abraham and Sarah was out in the middle of the desert, there was three men that came and ministered to him at the tent door. There were three men in the book of Daniel that was cast into the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There were three men on the cross the day that Jesus Christ was crucified. Two of them, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Jesus, the Bible says that he was in the belly of the earth for three days. You go on to read that Daniel in the, in the Old Testament when he would pray, the Bible said that he would pray faithfully three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Paul, on the road to Damascus, after coming to the understanding of Jesus Christ and was blinded by that light, the Bible says that Paul was blinded for three days. On in Paul's ministry, you will read where Paul, there was an affliction that come on his body. And the Bible says that Paul asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn that was in his flesh. Jesus, when he went to the garden, the Bible says that he wept three times. Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. In the holy city, on either side of that city, are gates. And on those gates, there are three gates on every side to the entrance of the holy city of God. But there is nothing as important that when Jesus said this, destroy this temple, and in three days, boy, I feel God. <laughs> destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up again. So it's obvious that the number three means something in the Bible. It means so much that God thought so much about numbers that he actually wrote a book on numbers. So for us to say that the, the number three or seven or one or five or 20 or 15 doesn't mean anything, then that tells me you don't understand the word of God. But I do understand this, that the, the, the number three and the word number seven simply means this. It means perfect or complete and if that is true in the Word of God that means there must be three traits that God has instilled in the believer that he expects us to operate with and the first one is this notice in verse 13 and now abideth what's the word abideth mean and now it dwells. Who's he writing to? The church, the believer. And now abideth, the first one is this, faith. Let me ask you something today, friend. How is your faith? How is your faith? How is your faith in, you know, here, here's, here's the great mystery of serving God. Sometimes we have more faith on what we see and what we hear than we do in faith in the things that is unseen. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I have never seen God face to face, but yet I believe by faith that he exists. I've never seen Jesus Christ. Oh, but by faith I believe that on January the 12th, 1993, there was a change that come inside of me by faith, and that was the relationship that I established with him. Amen. By faith. Amen. There are three things this morning that we need to consider as believers, and that is faith, hope, and, larity, and, or, and charity. The first we need to be thankful for of course is faith and i would encourage you this morning that if you take any notes that you need to take notes and if you don't go home and rewatch this and write down the notes and study the scripture that i'm about to give you faith is important Amen. without faith it is impossible to please god for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can I ask you, is your faith weak? Well, can I ask you, have you diligently been seeking the face of God? You see, things happen in our lives that we don't understand. And we get down on because things don't happen the way we want, then we see our faith begin to weaken. 
It's not that our faith is weak, but it's that you allowed the enemy to come in and disrupt your faith. Faith is something that every, listen, I don't know when I'm dying, but I know this by faith, I'm going to die. By faith, I believe there's in heaven. Never been there, but by faith, I believe it's there. I believe by faith that there is an eternal damnation called hell. Never been there, don't want to go there, so don't ask me. I'm going to do my best to get to heaven. Amen. But by faith, I believe there is a place called hell. I believe by faith that it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this is the judgment. I believe that by faith. And faith is an essential key and a part to the believer's life. We need faith. Faith is mentioned 247 times in the Bible. But the word faith is only mentioned twice in the Old Testament. What does faith mean? Faith simply means this. Faith means to that you believe or you trust or you obey in something. Let me ask you something. What do you believe in? What do you believe in? Oh, I believe strongly in my family. Then maybe you're believing the wrong things. Well, I believe so much in the job that I have. Well, then maybe you're putting your faith too much in your job. Well, I believe that in the government. Well, my friend, then you ought to read the Word of God. At the end of life, I will not stand before my family. At the end of life, I will not stand before you. At the end of life, I will not stand before the president of this United States of America. I will stand before a holy and a just God by faith. Faith is to believe and to trust and to obey in something. And you realize today that it is a sin. It is a sin not to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. And I mentioned this earlier, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is simply be believing this, that God is who he says he is and he will do what he said he would do. Here's the problem. This is where our faith gets weak because God doesn't do it in the time we think God should do it. Then our faith grows weak and we don't believe. Can I tell you something? God doesn't have to answer in your time, but God wants you to believe in his time. Amen. And by the way, God doesn't calculate time. The Bible says one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. We need the faith of God. And this is something that you need to understand as a believer. If you want to please God, then you must have faith in God. And you need to be thankful for the faith that you have. You know what? We'll put faith in things we possess. Oh, I've got so much faith in my wife. I know that she'll never cheat on me. <laughs> I've got so much faith in my wife that she'll never leave me. But then when she cheats on me and when she leaves me, not saying that's not what my wife did. She didn't do that. <laughs> then we question why. What happened? Boy, she had me fooled. I had so much faith in her. See, that's why the Bible says not to put your faith in man, but put it in God. Why? Because God says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you always. When my wife won't go with me, I know the Lord will. When my kids say they'll always be there for me, I know they mean it. But I know sometimes they won't be able to. But I know this, God will always be there. Faith is an essential aspect and a trait that God has developed and put inside of the believer. Faith, so why is faith so important to us? This is where you need to take notes. Because first of all, faith will forgive you. You just didn't get that. Faith will forgive you. The biggest problem and struggle that we face as people, as carnalistic human beings is this, is that we cannot forgive ourselves. You're exactly right. That's why Jesus had to come. 
But the Bible says because he come, the Bible says if you want forgiveness, that he promises by his word that he will forgive you if you have faith. Amen. Now I understand the devil's sitting there right now and he's talking to you and he's putting things in your mind and in your heart. And you're saying, but man, I deal with the same thing. And I feel as if I just can't. It's the same thing over and over and over and over. Can I tell you something? If you've got to come to the altar over and over and over and over, then you'll be pleasing God. You see, because I mentioned earlier, there's none good. There's not none good. No, not one. But God is good. God is faithful. And God is just. And can I tell you this, my friend? Faith will forgive you. That's who he is. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ come to seek and to save that which was lost? Those that need forgiving, not those that was already saved and didn't need any forgiving. He came to seek and to save those that was lost, the sinner that was going to hell, the one that says, I can never be forgiven. Today you can be forgiven by faith. Preacher, I believe what you're saying, and boy, you're excited about it. I didn't think I was going to be shouting this much, but that's okay. I'm not going to apologize for it. Amen? Faith will forgive you. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever seen Jesus Christ face to face? Why are you here? You're here by faith. Right? Because that's the trait. That's the first trait that God instills into belief. You know you couldn't be saved by his love without faith? Faith has to come first. Now abide in thee these three things. Faith. Faith is first. You've got to have faith. Who is your faith in? Is your faith in your government? Is your faith in your job? Is your faith in your husband? Is it in your wife? Is it in your children? Is it in your church? Is it in your community? Is it in the schools? Is it in the pasture? If it's any of the above, it's wrong. Faith can only be in Christ. Amen. The Bible teaches us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we, notice this, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. Mm. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All the things that you've done wrong. All of your past can be erased. It's not put under the blood. Listen, it's destroyed by the blood. Amen. You see, the old sacrifice in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice the animal's blood and they would put it on the altar. They would bring the sins to the priest and the priest would pray and the father, well, this is what happened. That blood of the animals would just cover the sin. But it was only there for a year. And here's the thing, that sin, whether it was a year, six months, a week, it was still there. Hey, but when Jesus Christ came, the only begotten Son of God, the precious Lamb that was slain for you, when the precious blood flowed from Calvary that day, can I tell you this, when that blood came out of his body, it was a covering, not only a covering, but it did away with the sin that was in your life. Faith will forgive you. And by faith, you must believe that. And I understand I'm human just the same as you. We get things all patched up with God. We start living the straight and narrow. Something else creeps in. We sin against God. Then we, oh my gosh, God will never forgive me. But that's not what the Word of God says. Now, this isn't a license for you to sin, but when you do sin, you can go to the propitiation. Bible teaches us that in Math, Mark chapter 2 by faith that you must believe this when Jesus in Mark chapter 2 verse 5 there was a man that was sick and had palsy and he couldn't get to Jesus but he had four good friends that saw the need to get this person to, do you understand what I'm saying? There is people in your life that you need to get to Jesus. They came to the house, it was too crowded. They couldn't go through the front door, so what did they do? They didn't give up. They went to the rooftop. 
they began to tear off the roof. Then they put the man down and lowered him down. And when the Bible says this in Mark chapter 2, verse 5, and when Jesus saw their faith. Let me ask you, how much faith do you have this morning? How much faith do you believe that God can save that drunk? How much faith do you have to believe that God can deliver that drug addict? How much faith today do you believe that God can deliver your children and your grandchildren, my friend? If you had the faith, you'd be on the altar now and you'd say, Oh God, would you please save them? That's faith. Believing that God will do. Preacher, I just don't know if God wants to save my children. Where's that come from? The Bible says that God is not slack, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. In other words, very patient, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Your children, my children, your grandchildren, my soon-to-happen, I hope and pray that I'll have grandchildren. If not, that's okay, but I'd sure love to have some. By faith, we must believe. Listen, Christians, stop living in a state of denial and fear and thinking that God can't when God says that he can. God can forgive you today. You may be here today and think that God, you don't know, Pastor, where I've been in my life. I don't, don't care to know, but God does. Because I can't forgive you, but God can. By faith, if you'll just believe him. We need faith. Would you agree? Not only do we need faith and believe that he will forgive us, but we also need faith in knowing that once he's forgiven us, that he will keep us. People ask me sometimes, they say, do you live on an emotional roller coaster one day up and one day down? And no. You ever question your salvation? No. I know that 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 I'm saved. I know that hasn't changed. January 12, 1993, 8 p.m., Westerville, Ohio. You've heard the story. I was in blue jeans with holes in them, a T-shirt. It was raining. It was cold. It was nasty out. But something happened by faith. I wish I could take you back to the moment, but I can't. So I won't. I'll just share it with you. God is still able to keep. 28 years going on 29 in January, February, whenever it was, January the 12th. Boys were born in February. January the 12th. Trisha's birthday is January 15th. Wish you a happy birthday. Don't forget. Got to put reminders on our phones anymore. But I don't have to put reminders on my phone what God did for me. It's been instilled in my heart. And I've never been the same. So we know that faith will not only forgive you, but faith will keep you. You can't keep yourself. You can't save yourself. If you could, and if you could save yourself, you'd have done it a long time ago, but you couldn't, so you might as well just get on, sh on board the old ship of Zion and say, God, I need you, and God, would you forgive me? And God, when you do forgive me, would you please keep me? Amen. Scripture, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, it says this, who are kept by the power of God Amen. through faith. How's your faith today? Do you feel like sometimes you just lost your salvation? Can I tell you that's not of God? Sure, you may have messed up along the way. Sure, you may feel convicted. And sure, you may feel as if you're not worthy. That's okay. God's got you right where he wants you. But can I tell you, God's faithful. God is just. He'll forgive you. And not only will he forgive you in those times of defeat and in those uh, times of deceitfulness and in those times where you don't feel worthy, can I tell you, God will keep you as well. Amen. By faith. By faith, you're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Can I tell you, by faith, when you stand before God, you're going to need Jesus. We need faith. The church needs faith. The church needs to be an example of what faith is in the day and age we live in. Faith not only will forgive you, it'll keep you, but three, faith will give you peace. Faith will give you a peace that you never thought you could ever have. Can I take you back about 12 days prior to my salvation experience with the Lord? I tried to find peace myself, and this is how I tried to find it. It was New Year's Eve, 1992. About midnight, I made this decision. I'm going to quit drinking. 
I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit cussing. And I'm going to stop acting crazy. And guess what? I did. I quit drinking. I quit smoking. I quit drink, getting crazy. I kept quit do doing the things that I had done in 92 from January the 1st to January the 12th. But something happened on January 12th. You know what happened? I realized I was still lost. I could quit all the drinking, the cursing, all those things. I could quit all those, but there was something that was still missing. It was a relationship with Jesus Christ. And by faith, you see, during that time period, I didn't have no peace. Something was missing. I didn't feel right. I was still burdened. I was still troubled. Something still wasn't right. And all that I did to try to change that, it was all still there. Now notice this. At 8 p.m. on January 12, 1993, notice this. Just like that, it was all gone. <laughs> it was all gone. What was all gone? The sin that I had, the desires that I had, the people that I hated I now loved, the people that I used to want to hang around with, I didn't want to hang around with them. There was something different inside of me. And you know what? There was something that I never had before. Even though I was only 24, I finally had peace in my life. You know what peace feels like? God, whatever. I knew that I could lay down that night and not have to think about what did I do last night and be concerned about it tomorrow. I knew that beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had forgiven me and he put a peace inside of me that I had never felt before. Preacher, do you always feel that way? Listen to me, look up here. That's why you don't ever go on feelings. Because you know what? The devil can really mess with your feelings. Most Christians get their feelings hurt in church. That's why you don't go on feelings. You go on faith. I told you on Wednesday night, I don't know why, but I'm telling you what, God, God found favor. I found favor with God. I did. My wife got the raw end of the deal, but I got the best deal. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to me. I married up, she married down. She got the raw end of the deal is what I'm telling you, if that don't make no sense to you. And now she may feel the same way about me, but can I tell you, I don't deserve her. I don't deserve my children. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve to be a pastor of this church. Oh, but thank God, he has put a desire inside of us, and he's given us a peace to do it. Amen. You see, that's what faith will do. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I ask you, do you have faith today? Do you have peace today so we know that faith will forgive us faith will keep us faith will give us peace and notice this faith will also heal you <laughs> faith will heal you physically mentally emotionally but more importantly spiritually <laughs> hey God wants to heal you today it may not be physically, it not be, may not be emotionally, it may not be, can I tell you, but spiritually, God wants to heal you. You see, I've seen too much of God healing for me not to believe that God can. Preacher, what about my dad? What about my dad? But dad God didn't heal your daddy. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes he did just not the way I wanted it you see God saw down the road God said God healed Jim why didn't God heal Art God healed Art because <laughs> see God could see down the road couldn't he sis what about Jim well, what about Jim did, did God heal you Jim well, why does Jim get the healing and I don't? You're, you're missing the whole point. My dad and Arthur got the ultimate healing. They don't have to put up with what Jim's got to put up with. You see, Jim has to go through every day of his life. Is the cancer back? Is the cancer? Every scan that he goes, every blood work. Hey, listen, fighting against the enemy, it's back, it's back. When you don't feel good, is it the cancer? See, that's what I'm talking about. But God allowed Jim to be healed. 
and God can get Jim through it. Now, Brother Jim, not to be the bearer of bad news, but there'll come a day when your breath will be taken from you. You'll be, have the ultimate healing. You see, that's what God does. God will heal you. And the prayer of faith, how's your faith? And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If you have committed sins, then they shall be forgiven him. Not only will faith heal us, but faith will care for you. And faith will meet your need. Hey, God's been too good for me not to brag on him. God has cared for me. God has kept me. God has provided for me. You know how many people called me and said, man, you are absolutely absurd. You are crazy. Why in the world would you ever quit a job to be a pastor? You had it made. Thousands upon thousands of dollars you made. You had benefits. You had a good retirement. But here's the key. It's not what God wanted for me. And in doing it, I was miserable because I knew what I needed to be doing. So you know what I did? I stepped out in faith. And I said, okay, God, I don't understand it. The numbers don't add up. The bills are still there. But, God, I'm going to trust in you by faith. And guess what? God has kept me. God has blessed me. God has given me more than I deserve. Hey, he has met every nerve. The Bible says, for my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Why? It's because faith. Faith is important to the believer. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you all to go out there and quit your job and by faith say, listen, I'm just not going to do nothing. It's not what I said. I work harder now than I've ever worked. And I don't do it for a paycheck either. And you don't pay me either. God cares for me. Because that's who God is. Faith will care and meet your need. Mark Matthew 6.30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow it cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. So we see that God will forgive us because of faith. Faith will keep us. Faith will give us peace. Faith will heal us. Faith will care and meet our needs. And you know what? Faith will move the mountain that stands in your way today. And here's the mountain that's in most of your way today. It's sin. You want God to bless while dabbling in what God says he can't bless in. You know what you'll blame? You'll blame your spouse. You'll blame your family. Some will even go as far as to blame the church and blame the pastor. And you know what? Here's the sad part. You'll blame the devil. It's not his fault. He's just doing his job. The question is, where's your faith? Where's your faith? There's not a devil in hell that can prevent you from serving God. There's not a devil in hell that can't take care of you if you'll have faith in God. There's not a devil in hell that can make that mountain stay in front of you if you have faith in God. Matthew 17, 20 said, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith. This is Jesus as a grain of mustard seed. You shall say to that mountain, what mountain is in your way? What mountain is in your way that you need moved today? You know what? By faith, all you've got to do is say, mountain, it's time to move. Jesus set the example when he was tempted out in the wilderness. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He went out into the wilderness. What did the devil do? He began to tempt him. What was the last words that Jesus told the devil? Get thee hence. In other words, Satan, I'm tired of you. I'm done with you. Get behind me. 
I'm not serving you anymore. I'm serving God. I'm not believing you anymore. I'm believing God. I'm believing God that he can save my children. He can save the drunk. He can save the drug addict. He can save the prostitute. Can I tell you, God can do anything if you have faith. <laughs> if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. In other words, devil... Go bother somebody else. I'm not going to listen to your lies. And by the way, the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. He is the author of confusion. By the way, he hates you. And he'll do everything within his power to question God. That's not God, that's the enemy. And let me just tell you this. Sometimes the devil will bring things in front of you that make it feel good to you. Do you not know that he can transform himself as an angel of light? He's the great deceiver. And he'll do anything to get your mind off of Christ. But by faith, I'm challenging you today to stay on the course. So we see that faith will forgive you. I'm closing. Faith will keep you. Faith will give you peace. Faith will heal you. Faith will care and meet your need. And faith will move mountains. But I like this one the best because this one means the most. Faith will save you. Listen. I'm glad. You may have heard some things about me. But there's some things about me that not even my mom knows. There's things about me that my daddy didn't know. There's things about me that the closest friends that I have does not know. But can I tell you, God knows. And here's the thing. If my mommy knew some of the stuff, she probably wouldn't do anything about it. She would have told dad. <laughs> or she would have been like Rich Moore's wife and hit me upside the head with a banjo. But of all I've done, see, you listen, the Apostle Paul said, I am the least among you. That's how I feel today. Paul said, I am the chief of all sinners. That's how I feel today because of my past. Listen, look up here. I am thankful I haven't forgot my past. What do you mean, preacher? Shouldn't you forgive and forget? Listen, I'm thankful for forgiveness, but I'm thankful I'll never forget. You want to know why? Because I don't want to go back. I know what it was like to go back. I know what it was like to live that way. That's why I choose by faith not to. I knew the person. I know the person I used to be. And can I tell you, if God can save me, God can surely save any of you. And God can keep you. As we stand today, let me ask you something. How is your faith?